from businessinsider.com, the director of the FBI, says the whole of Chinese society is a threat to the U.S. and that Americans must step up to defend themselves. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. And I got this pair of headlines from Drudge Report. Uh, they, they were brilliantly juxtaposed here. This next one, fastcompany.com. Six U.S. intelligence agencies warn against using, using Huawei phones. I hope I'm saying that right. Six intelligence officials, including the heads of the CIA, FBI, and NSA, have told the Senate Intelligence Committee that they would not recommend that U.S. citizens use smartphones from the Chinese companies Huawei and ZTE. Da, 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 da. Quote from FBI Director Chris Wray before the committee, we're deeply concerned about the risks of allowing any company or entity that is beholden to foreign governments that don't share our values to gain positions of power inside our telecommunications networks. That provides the capacity to exert pressure or control over our telecommunications infrastructure. It provides the capacity to maliciously modify or steal information, and it provides the capacity to conduct undetected espionage. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Do I, do I have to just, can I, can I just say this is the pot calling the kettle black, our values? Do, do these people realize how little trust the American public has in them at this point? It, it, it's a joke. It's a, literally a joke more than anything. I mean, it is, it is punchlines on late night TV. It, 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 it is just a, a given, something that we joke about, that you can't have a private conversation if, you're, if your cell phone is around. L represent our values? I mean, I, I, I hope I don't, I don't sound, <clears throat> I don't sound too triggered by this. But geez, now, and I understand, maybe, maybe you want to think, all right, better, better the devil we know of the United States government spying on us and taxing us, and, and to the point of the average American working for government half the year. Oh, geez. I, okay, so possibly you want to be protected by the rancher who's going to get to butcher you rather than the one who's not. Okay, fair enough. You want to be a sucker for American authority here, for the American federal government's authority over you to say that we're the good guys. Yeah, we're the good guys. The Chinese are the bad guys. But so <clears throat> that little story about the phones needs to be put into the context of this much bigger story. So back to the Business Insider. FBI Director Christopher Wray on Tuesday reiterated a commonly held view among U.S. intelligence officials that China is seeking to become a global superpower through unconventional means, but he framed it as both a governmental and a societal threat to the U.S. Be very, very afraid. Speaking before the Senate Intelligence Committee alongside the heads of other U.S. intelligence agencies, Ray said that to undermine the U.S.'s military, economic, cultural, and informational power across the globe, China was using methods relying on more than just its state institutions. One of the things, because, quote, one of the things we're trying to do is view the China threat as not just a whole of government threat, but a whole of society threat on their end. And I think it's going to take a whole of society response by us. Of course, Senator Marco Rubio set up the question, asking if China was planning to overtake the U.S. as the world's most dominant power. And this is like, oh, poor little Marco. <clears throat> The effect of who is going to be, uh, the things that affect who is going to be the biggest superpower are determined by much larger economic forces than government. I mean, as someone who, who pays lip service, at least, to being pro-free market, you have to understand that. But you, and, and I, I, I Someone like Marco Rubio, I don't, I don't mean to single him out, but as certainly a, a, a great poster child for the security state, raising the specter of fear. But this is it. This is what we're being set up for now. This is the unifying enemy.
It's China. Uh, skipping so through so much drivel here. Okay. Ray said collectors, what the intelligence community calls people who collect intelligence on behalf of agencies or government, had infiltrated U.S. universities. Quote, I think in this setting I would just say that the use of non-traditional collectors, especially in the academic setting, whether it's professors, scientists, students, we see in almost every field office that the FBI has around the country. I hope this doesn't sound naive, but I love to turn what uh, the authorities often like to say to the plebs. Well, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about. Why not just have a policy of complete transparency? Oh, because that would make the whole thing fall apart. I'm sorry. But this, if, if there's a conflict brewing between the United States government and the Chinese government, I, I don't really care who wins. I just want to see a lot of blood spilled. And if it means that the Chinese government hacks the U.S. government and releases all the other ways that they're spying on American citizens and doing unconstitutional things, you'll never hear me cheer for the Chinese government. But I will cheer for the blood being spilled. Oh, man. I, mean, I, back, I don't even know how much more of this I can take. Chinese cybersecurity threats. According to Coates, frankly, the United States is under attack by entities that are using cyber to penetrate virtually every major action that takes place within the U.S. And it's like, hello, I, I, I mean, I, do you guys also not realize that, to use a cliche, rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, I think is appropriate here? And I say that because we have blockchain technology now, we have Bitcoin, we have cryptocurrency, we have better means of security. Very soon, regardless of what political fate you people meet, you're, you're already obsolete. Already, this is, this is, this is already happening. The, the, the days are, of, of this system of centralized control are numbered. And, and I hope that's what we see manifest with this kind of conflict. And I'm pretty sure the American people are too smart at this point to fall for this kind of fear mongering. If this is their effort, and maybe this is just the opening salvo of whatever, that they're going to somehow make China the enemy in the eyes of the American people, nah, we're too smart for that. Not gonna happen. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.